Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Signal Processing and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, control systems, mechatronics, robotics, etc. The purpose of this particular tutorial is twofold. First of all, I will explain how to compute phase and magnitude of a transfer function. Secondly, in this tutorial we will practice complex number algebra that is often used in signal processing and control engineering. Okay, so let's start. Consider this transfer function. W of s is equal to s plus 2 over s plus 3. Our goal is to compute the magnitude and phase of this transfer function. That is, we want to transform this transfer function into this form. m of omega multiplying e to the power j phi, where m is the magnitude and phi is the phase of the transfer function. And omega is the angular frequency. This particular form of the transfer function is called the polar form of the transfer function. To compute this polar form, we first need to compute the sinusoidal transfer function. We compute the sinusoidal transfer function by substituting s by j omega over here, where j is the imaginary unit. That is, j is equal to square root of minus 1. So let's compute the sinusoidal transfer function. We have w of j omega is equal to 2 plus j omega over 3 plus j omega. Obviously, this is a complex number. And our goal is to decompose this complex number. Here we will stop for a second and recall a few basic facts about complex numbers. Over here I'm sketching the complex plane. On this axis we have the real part of a complex number and on this axis we have the imaginary part of complex number. Let us let our complex number be denoted by z and every complex number has a real part denoted for example by x and it has an imaginary part denoted by y and the imaginary part usually multiplies the complex unit. Graphically we represent a complex number by a point in this plane. And over here, I will add that this is a real part of Z, and this is the imaginary part of Z. X and Y are the coordinates of our point in the complex plane. So this is X, and this is Y. The modulus of a complex number is usually denoted by this symbol. This is also an absolute value symbol in the case of real numbers and it's equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. And obviously we can see from this graph that the modulus of the complex number is this distance. That is, it's the shortest distance from our complex number to the zero point. Next, this angle over here is also denoted by phi and this is a phase of a complex number. And from this graph over here we can conclude that phase is arctan or inverse tangent of y over x. Once we define the modulus of a complex number and phi, we can represent this complex number in the polar form. 
we can write symbolically z is equal to modulus of z e to the power j times phi. And here it should be mentioned that usually phi is expressed in radians. Now, by comparing this form of the complex number and our target form of our transfer function, we conclude that magnitude is actually the modulus and phi is actually the phase. There are at least two approaches for computing the magnitude and phase of the sinusoidal transfer function. The first approach is based on previously introduced formulas. That is, we need to compute the real part of the sinusoidal transfer function and we need to compute the imaginary part of the sinusoidal transfer function. Once we have the real and imaginary parts, we can simply use the previously explained formulas to compute the magnitude and to compute the phase. So let us first explain this approach. And as a side comment, this approach is a little bit complicated. However, it's very instructive to go through this approach and to derive the final expression of m and phi and later on I will explain you a much more elegant and faster approach. Okay, so let's start. Let us analyze this expression over here. The complicating factor is that we have a complex number given over here in the denominator. So let's try to get rid of this complex number in the denominator. We can do that by multiplying this fraction by 3 minus j omega over 3 minus j omega. Obviously this expression is equal to 1. So what's the motivation for performing this multiplication? Well, from basic algebra we know that a square minus b square is actually equal to a minus b multiplying a plus b. So if we have, for example, the expression that looks like this, x minus jy, then if we multiply this expression by x plus jy, we will obtain something like this, x squared minus j multiplying y squared. And this is actually equal to x squared minus j squared is minus 1 multiplying y squared and actually here's an error I should some, write something like this we have basically minus minus 1 multiplying y squared and this becomes x squared plus y squared and in this way we can get rid of j that is we can get rid of the complex unit by performing this multiplication, we obtain this expression. In the denominator, we have 9 plus omega square. In the numer numerator, we have this expression, 6 plus omega square plus omega j. You can easily verify that the expression in the numerator is correct. I leave, the, I leave this as a homework. From this expression, we immediately obtain the real and imaginary part. The real part is obviously 6 plus omega square divided by 9 plus omega square. And the imaginary part is omega over 9 plus omega omega square. So what's the magnitude then? The magnitude is simply equal to square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So we have 6 plus omega squared over 9 plus omega squared squared plus 
omega over 9 plus omega squared squared. Next, let us try to simplify this expression. First of all, once we multiply all the terms, we have something that looks like this. And you can easily verify this expression. In the denominator, denominator you have 9 plus omega squared squared. And in the numerator, we have omega to the power 4 plus 13 omega squared plus 36. Okay, so this expression looks quite complex. However, there is one catch over here. You can actually factorize the term in the numerator and after factorization the term in the numerator looks like this square root of 9 plus omega square multiplying omega square plus 4 and you can easily verify this by multiplying these two terms and by expanding them and adding the resulting expressions. And in the denominator, we have this expression. Let us further simplify this expression. This term over here and this square canceled, can be canceled. And as the result, we have that the magnitude is only a function of omega and it's equal to four plus omega square divided by 9 plus omega square. Okay, how about the phase? Phase is equal to arc tan or the inverse tangent of imaginary over real. So this is our sinusoidal transfer function. The imaginary part is this part and the real part is this part. So we have imaginary over real and after cancelling these two terms since they are equal we obtain that the phase is arctan omega divided by 6 plus omega square okay this was the first approach for computing the magnitude and the phase of our transfer function. And to be honest, this approach is a little bit complex. As I mentioned earlier, there is a more elegant and easier way to compute the magnitude and phase. And let's explain the second approach. First, let's go back to the sinusoidal transfer function. The sinusoidal transfer function has this form. 2 plus j omega over 3 plus j omega. Here's the trick. Instead of computing the real and imaginary part of the complete complex number, we can instead transform the complex numbers in the numerator and in the denominator into the polar form. So what is the polar form of 2 plus j omega? The polar form is obviously the magnitude of this complex number or the modulus and the modulus is equal to the real part squared plus imaginary part squared. So that's 4 plus omega squared. And we need this term over here, e to the power j multiplying the phase. So what is the phase of this term? The phase is arctan of imaginary over real, and this is arctan omega over 2. This is the polar form of the number in the numerator. 
How about the polar form of the number in the denominator? By using the same logics, we have 9 plus omega squared multiplying e to the power j arc tan imaginary over real that is omega over 3. This term can be written as 4 plus omega squared divided by 9 plus omega squared multiplying e to the power j and in the bracket we have arctan omega over 2 minus arctan omega over 3. We can immediately observe that this is the magnitude that we have previously computed. However, the phase looks a little bit different from the phase that we have previously computed. However, I will show you that this phase expression is actually equal to, to the phase that we have previously computed. To show that, we need to remember one trigonometric formula. That is, we need to remember the expression for arctan alpha minus arctan beta. So let's write that formula, arctan alpha minus arctan beta is equal to arctan and we have alpha minus beta over 1 plus alpha times beta where alpha and beta are arbitrary numbers so by recognizing that alpha is equal to omega over 2 and that beta is equal to omega over 3, we have arctan omega over 2 minus arctan omega over 3 is actually equal to arctan and we have over here omega over 2 minus omega over 3 and in the denominator we have 1 plus omega over 2 multiplying omega over 3 and as the result we have arctan and let's multiply these two expressions and let's see what do we have here I will erase this part over here to avoid confusion and let's see what do we have over here Obviously, we have 6 over here, and then we have, let's see, let's see what happens over here. Here we have 3 omega minus 2 omega, and over here we have 6, and we have 6 plus omega squared. I will erase this part to avoid confusion. Obviously, something can be cancelled here, then few things can be grouped together. 3 omega minus omega becomes omega, and the final expression becomes arctan of omega over 6 plus omega squared. And this expression is exactly the phase that we have previously derived. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.